Do you want to know who is the most powerful satellite navigation system, GPS, GLONASS, Galileo, or Beidou? Here we will compare the main four navigation satellite systems in the world. A satellite system with GLOB all coverage is called the Global Navigation Satellite System. We briefly call it GNSS. The current GNSS includes the Global Positioning System developed by the United States, the Global Navigation Satellite System operated by Russia and the Beidou Navigation Satellite System launched by China, as well as the European Union's Galileo system. Let's now look at the differences between the four existing GNSS systems. Here, we'll introduce you to their respective characteristics one by one, and then compare them one by one. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Hot Topics Time, a channel to interpret news from a new perspective and explore the wisdom behind the news. Before we start today's video, please subscribe to our channel, which is the encouragement that we can create more videos. Okay, let's continue the topic we are talking about, firstly, let's start with GPS, the earliest satellite system project, which was launched by the U.S. Department of Defense in 1973. The first prototype spacecraft was launched in 1978, and the entire constellation became operational in 1993. The system began to provide global service in 1994. As satellites wear out and technology advances, the U.S. government continues to replace older satellites and modernize GPS to meet higher requirements. GLONASS is the second navigation system with global coverage. The Soviet Union started the GLONASS project in 1976 and launched the first satellite in 1982. GLONASS has gone through three generations, GLONASS, GLONASS-M, and GLONASS-K, with the third generation not yet completed. Russia's navigation system achieved full global coverage with 24 satellites in 1995. The system was restored in 2011 after a decline in capacity. Next, let's look at Beidou. It is named after the Big Dipper constellation, known in Chinese as Beidou, which literally means Star of the Big Dipper, and is the name given by ancient Chinese astronomers to the seven brightest stars in the constellation Ursa Major. Historically, this group of stars was used for navigation to locate the North Star. Therefore, the name Beidou also serves as a metaphor for the purpose of the satellite navigation system. China's Beidou system has undergone three phases of construction, with the third phase being fully deployed in July 2020. Beidou started in 2000 with the now retired Beidou 1, with only three satellites. The second phase, also known as Compass, began operations in 2012 with only 16 satellites covering the Asia-Pacific region. Unlike GPS, Beidou's phasing strategy allowed the system to be put into commercial use as early as possible. In addition, the experience gained in the second phase has allowed scientists to make a better design for Beidou 3. The third step of Beidou was launched in 2015, using a total of 35 satellites for full global coverage. Let's finally look at Galileo. Galileo is a global satellite navigation system that came online in 2016 to provide improved positioning and timing information with significant positive implications for many European services and users, for example, Galileo allows users to know their exact location with greater accuracy than other existing systems provide products that people use every day. From navigation devices in cars to cell phones, benefit from the greater accuracy provided by Galileo. Galileo also provides critical emergency response services, which will make Europe's roads and railroads safer and more efficient. It also promotes innovation in Europe, helping to create many new products and services, creating jobs and giving Europe a larger share of the 175 billion euro global GNSS market. In addition, Galileo offers Europe and its citizens independence and sovereignty, a range of environmental benefits and a number of new services unique to the Galileo program, including open services, commercial services, search and rescue, etc.so, why is Europe developing Galileo navigation system, until now, GNSS users have had to rely on the non-civilian US GPS or Russian GLONASS signals. 
and Europe developed Galileo so that European countries would not have to rely on the US GPS or Russian GLONASS systems and would no longer have to worry that the systems could be disabled or downgraded by their operators at any time. With Galileo, Europe now has a new, reliable alternative while European independence is a major goal of the program, Galileo also gives Europe a place in the rapidly expanding global navigation satellite system. The program is intended to be compatible with all existing and planned GNSS and interoperable with GPS and GLONASS. In this sense, Galileo is positioned to enhance the current coverage, providing a more seamless and accurate experience for multi-constellation users around the world. Satellite positioning has become an essential service that we often take for granted. Imagine what would happen if the GNSS signal was suddenly turned off. Truck and cab drivers, ship and aircraft crews, and millions of people around the world would suddenly be out of contact. In addition, financial and communications activities, public utilities, security and humanitarian operations, and emergency services would all come to a halt. In other words, as the use of satellite-based navigation systems continues to expand, the impact of potential signal failures becomes even greater, with the addition of Galileo to the global GNSS constellation, we not only minimize these risks, but also ensure better performance and accuracy for end users. What are the advantages of Beidou compared to Europe's Galileo and the US GPS? First, the other systems have 24 satellites in medium Earth orbit. In addition to the 24 satellites, the Compass constellation has three geostationary orbit satellites and three inclined geosynchronous orbit satellites. The additional six satellites are special in that they have a relatively fixed range of activity, this layout can increase the accuracy of Beidou to 5 meters in China and the Asia-Pacific region, and 10 meters in other regions. In addition, BDS has an ace up its sleeve, the SMS service. This is a feature that allows users to communicate in both directions. In areas not covered by cellular or communication signals, BDS can provide SMS service in uninhabited areas, such as deserts, forests, and mountainous or polar regions. Through this service, users in distress can inform rescue teams of their location and condition. As the most populous country in the world, it is important for China to have its own GNSS to meet the needs of the country's socio-economic development. So, why GPS and Galileo to face stiff challenge, it is because China and Russia are already cooperating in the field of satellite navigation. In early 2014, the two countries established the China-Russia Strategic Cooperation Committee on Important Satellite Navigation. If they are deeply linked and even interoperable, they could form an ideal navigation system that would not only facilitate cross-border transportation between the two sides in peacetime, but also rely on each other in wartime, improving the stability and survivability of the entire navigation system. This would pose a threat to the United States and Europe. Both the GLONASS and Beidou satellite constellations can send satellite signals to guide aircraft carriers, submarines, and other weapons platforms. They can be used to reconnoiter or track other nations' assets. Targeting or guiding unmanned systems, such as drones to intercontinental ballistic missiles, also requires satellite navigation. Emily Young Carr, an associate fellow at the American Enterprise Institute, noted that satellites would play a prominent role in a potential US China conflict in the Western Pacific, since satellites in the Chinese BDS constellation are constantly orbiting the Earth. Looking for U.S. aircraft carriers and the like, they would be able to find these warships in the event of some conflict, such as a possible Chinese invasion of Taiwan. In this scenario, the carriers would become the backbone of U.S. air power, and China would seek to strike them with cruise or ballistic missiles once located. This cooperation in navigation technology could become a new headache for the West amid the current rising tensions between the US and China and between Moscow and Washington. Okay, that's all for today. Please put your comments below, and share your insightful ideas with other people. Thank you so much for your continuous support. Your precious time with us is highly appreciated. Hot Topics Time, time to explore the wisdom behind the news, we will see you in the next video.